Hello and welcome, you're watching Nothing But The Truth. In an interview given in Rome in October, Cardinal Oswald Gracias, the Archbishop of Bombay and a member of the Pope's Council of Nine Cardinal Advisors and therefore one of the most important cardinals in the world, has spoken out in surprisingly compassionate understanding and warm terms about homosexuality and the LGBT community. And it wasn't just a few casual comments, but a lengthy and well-considered interview. In fact, it's an interview that carries a clarion call to the church to change its thinking and its attitude to homosexuality. Joining me today to explain and elaborate on his thinking and to indicate how fair he is prepared to go is Cardinal Gracias himself. Cardinal Gracias, in an interview you gave in Rome in October, you've spoken with understanding, compassion and warmth of homosexuality and the LGBT community. So let me ask you, as one of the foremost cardinals, how do you view homosexuals and LGBT people? Well, I would say very clearly, uh, I think this is the stand of the church and certainly the stand of Pope Francis also, that uh, we are all part of the church. And if somebody has a certain homosexual orientation, doesn't mean that we reject that person, we cut him out. We need to be compassionate, understanding, and give pastoral care to everybody, including homosexuals. So I'm, I have no doubt about that at all. So I was a little surprised that there was a surprise about my comments, because this, I think, is what the church is moving towards. In your eyes, Cardinal Gracias, is homosexuality a choice, or is it a God-given condition? Now, this, I would uh, say, we would depend on science. There are different views on this. Uh, I, I spoke to many African cardinals and African bishops when I was in uh, Rome for the Synod. And I was surprised at the amount of emotion on this issue. And then I realized that uh, uh, they told me that there were many uh, young men, young boys over there, who were bitter because they had been uh, made that way. Uh, by people who had come for sex tourism in certain parts of Africa. That's why they're so hostile to the very idea of uh, showing any compassion or care to homosexuals. But uh, I, while I understand that, and those who are to victimize young boys and make them uh, get this particular orientation, surely they should be condemned. But uh, we can't put everybody in the same basket, the same tray, and say everybody really uh, is bad. A person with homosexual uh, orientation, uh, there are really two views. I've discussed this often before with doctors, with scientists, psychiatrists. Uh, some say it is uh, induced, some say it is really a God-given uh, uh, tendency which they have. If it's a God-given tendency, then of course, how, who are we to judge, who are we to condemn and reject them? If it's induced, then we should help them to see what, what they should do and how to rectify the situation. So whatever it is, I do think that we must give them pastoral attention and I have no doubt about this whatsoever. Now in India, as you know, Cardinal Gracias, the Delhi High Court decriminalized homosexuality between consenting adults in private in 2009. But last year, the Supreme Court yes. reversed that yes. ruling and has made it a crime again. How do you view the step the Supreme Court has taken? Uh, the, the Supreme Court really has taken a technical stand that it is the legislature which makes law, not the judiciary. Uh, that's a technical matter uh, for them to decide. But uh, the church itself is not for criminalization of homosexuals and homosexual acts. We say these acts are not moral in the sense that they are not the normal uh, way we think God wants things to happen. But certainly we do not want criminalization of uh, homosexual acts. Now in the interview that I keep referring to, the one that you gave in Rome in October, you say, and I'm quoting you, you yeah, say this yeah. of homosexuals. I realize their goodness, which many people do not realize. You cannot put them in chains. In which case, what do you say to members of the clergy as well as many members of the laity who regard homosexuality as evil or as a disorder? 
you know I would say to them please be compassionate uh, most people uh, have not met people who have got this tendency when you meet them and you understand their suffering their anxiety they're wanting to be part of the church wanting to really be in the mainstream again but then you understand uh, what exactly they are going through, what exactly they are feeling. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, the official document of the Church, published uh, already in 1990, I think, uh, explicitly said there should be no discrimination uh, in word or in article against homosexuals. But this is the general teaching of the Church, and this is really Pope Francis has been consistently insisting with us to be compassionate, merciful. And I do think the church sh should be that. Uh, people are maybe angry. They, they don't under I think pe many people do not fully understand uh, these people. They've not met them. Uh, the first step would be meet these people, talk to them, see their difficulty, and then see how we can help them. I That's want to what come I would say to them. I want to come, Cardinal Gracias, to the church's attitude towards homosexuality and the LGBT people. You keep stressing the need for compassion. You say that the catechism of the church is to be compassionate, to believe that these are people and members, full-fledged members of the church. Yeah. In that interview, yes. you say, and I'm quoting you, my own view is that the church has to be all-embracing, inclusive, and take care of everybody. But there are many who believe that that's not been the traditional attitude of the church. And are you saying to those hardline, rigid traditionalists that they need to change their thinking? I would say so, I would say so. I do understand why they feel that way. Probably have never really reconsidered. They've always, uh, I, I think many people have felt that this was something was t done totally by choice. And therefore people try to defy regular norms, set norms and become homosexuals and, and etc. Now please, I would say to them, Look at the cases, meet the people, see their suffering, and uh, my own conviction is that people will gradually come to accept what the church is saying, what I'm saying at least. And I, I think that's really the direction in which uh, the church will be going. I want to quote something else that you said in that interview in Rome, because I think in many ways it's a seminal interview. You said, to not be welcoming would not be a Catholic attitude it would not be Christ's attitude. How should the church make itself more welcoming to homosexuals and the LGBT community? Uh, uh, I would completely stand by what I said over there. That would, and that's really, it's true. Uh, the church has got to be welcoming to everybody, whatever their sexual orientation. Uh, and I think I, in an interview I said, no mother rejects her own children no matter what. And therefore the church has got to be embracing, try to find what pastoral care we can give. And we discussed this uh, during the synod. It came up for discussion in the synod also. We couldn't come to a full agreement because of different people saying different things. But uh, I think that uh, this is the direction the church would go. Because I think this is what Christ would do. The church, we should as disciples of Jesus Christ have got to do what he would do and I think that's what he would do he would be welcoming understanding and guiding and helping them but you know Cardinal Gracias it's no great secret that the clergy bishops archbishops in Africa take a very different view to homosexuality they do genuinely believe it is evil and sinful how can you convince them to be more welcoming, to be compassionate, to be embracing. Uh, as I mentioned to you in my discussion with some of the African bishops, uh, I, I, I for the first time understood why there is so much compassion in this. Because they have seen cases of young African boys being, who have been molested by people who have come from outside and have made these boys homosexuals and he says uh, the, the bishops told me boys come and tell me uh, father I was not like this I was made this I was made this and uh, the bishop was I, mean, I could make out that he was very emotional and almost tears in his eyes when he spoke of how cruel these people were towards his boys now uh, when there's so much emotion at this moment you cannot really uh, argue too much 
and therefore you've got to understand why this emotion is but then uh, I was thinking of the boys the boys the African boys who have been victims now we must give them uh, pastoral care also we must welcome them help them to uh, so the, I can see why uh, Africa feels so strongly uh, only now after the Synod after I discussed with some African bishops and I, I do see it will take some time before Africa is able to discuss this you, uh, you do uh, accept dispassionately I would say you do accept Cardinal Gracias that as far as Africa and the church in Africa is concerned you have how shall I put it a lot of effort to make still before they come around to your way of thinking certainly I, I do think I do think I, I do think that that's why also the governments have been so uh, strong and uh, they made very uh, laws laws that really are very stringent about this and I was surprised at the beginning but okay. it's only after I spoke to bishops I, I realized why these laws are made and there's a certain context and background but uh, I'm hopeful that gradually things would change there too because the church is universal the church is compassionate and we all have got to be compassionate Carlo Gracias in that interview and I keep coming back to it because it is truly a seminal interview I think one of the most striking things you said was in answer to a question when you were asked what would you say to homosexuals and LGBT people who feel spurned by the church and this was your answer I would say the church embraces you wants you and the church needs you you are not someone who is a burden to the church you are part of us now it's one thing to say that in Rome it would be a completely different thing to say it in India can you repeat that thought and those sentiments in public in India I, I think uh, India is gradually getting also a custom this is a uh, when, when people understand what homosexuality is, how they have this tendency, there should be, of course, much more scientific research. Uh, I, I don't think that India also, India is certainly liberal-minded. India, the Indian uh, people think, reflect, and see what's to be done. And uh, I think the Indian community, the Indian people, would gradually also accept this. You think India is becoming more tolerant? India it is Rome becoming also. more accepting? It's not ready in India. So you have no hesitation yes. repeating those words in India to an Indian audience. You wouldn't shy away from doing that. No, I would not have that, that they are part of us because uh, that was the question. Uh, they feel rejected. I said, no, we need it. You are part of us. You are our parishioners. You are our people. We care for you. We need you. We embrace you and uh, we'll take care of you. That's what I said. In which case, let me and ask I, you I, this. I would, I, I would have no hesitation in repeating that over here. Let me ask you this in that case, Cardinal Gracias. If Indian gays who are Catholics were to ask you to say Mass for them, would you agree? Yes. Well, yes, I, I, as a matter of fact, uh, they have asked me once that I would say, would I, would I offer Mass for them? Um, I said, certainly, I would have no difficulty in saying Mass for you. Uh, you understand that there are strict rules about who receives communion and who does not receive communion, etc. All that will have to be observed. But to say a mass and to and pray together with them, I would have no difficulty. They, they asked me ex explicitly about this, and I said yes, I would be willing to do that. And I, I, I think that would be uh, a sign of openness which the church, the church is showing it. Uh, see, the Hol Holy Father Pope Francis called the year of mercy from December 8th, and I'm sure. In many parts of the world, there will be such masses. I discussed this with uh, the Archbishop of Chicago, uh, and he was telling me how he's dealing with this particular problem. So I can, I can see everybody's trying to uh, find ways forward in this. Cardinal Gracias, I have to say that your views are, and I'm using this word advisedly, almost revolutionary. Compared to what one has heard traditionally from the church, your views are almost earth-shakingly different. Now, you are also a member of the Pope's Council of Nine Cardinal Advisors. That makes you a member of a very small group of select important cardinals. Have you discussed your views on homosexuality and the LGBT community with Pope Francis? 
No, no, I have not. This, this, we have, this has not come up for our discussion. But I can see uh, the, I, we've discussed so many things, uh, formally, informally, and uh, I would think that this would be also his view, but, uh, but, I, but we have really never formally discussed this. Neither but formally nor informally, never discussed. But really. you're saying something very important. You're but saying, although. In, in one interview, he said. Carry on. Yes, I was going to say, in one interview in a plane, he said, Who am I to judge? But I don't know when that was. One of his uh, first interviews in the plane, I think coming back from Brazil, when they asked him what is his attitude towards homosexuals. But uh, I, I think that he would be. Uh, he's rather, I mean, I, I would be rather similar to what he's saying, I think. You're fairly confident that although you haven't discussed this subject with Pope Francis, either formally or informally, you're fairly confident that his views would accord with yours? I, I, yes, sir, Karan, I would say that. I would say that. Unfortunately, Cardinal Gracias, because there uh, are... It is, actually, I, I, you know, Karan, this is not changing Catholic doctrine. It's a, it is the traditional Catholic doctrine, but you know, you've got to read it, understand it, apply it. And, and, and I, I think that's, uh, many have not read, read all the Catholic doctrine, they're not, right. so I, I, I'm fairly, I'm, I'm quite confident, yes, more than fairly confident. You're quite that, confident uh, the Pope would, would agree with you. You're quite confident the Pope would agree with yes, you. Yes, yes, Colonel. Unfortunately, Cardinal Gracias, many yes, Indian yes, Catholics I, do not agree with you. Many Indian Catholics have reservations about accepting leave aside, embracing homosexuality and the LGBT community. And many of your own parishioners in Bombay would publicly disagree with you. What do you say to them? Because their disagreement yes, is well known. I'm yes, I, I'm aware of that. You see, uh, what we should do, Karan, all, all of us should understand that we make a distinction between the person and what they call the sin and the sinner. Uh, now the person has always got to be respected, accepted and helped. Then of course we are not judging the morality of the acts, that has got to be taken care of and assisted and counseled and come to proper discussion. This is what we've been discussing at the Synod also and I, I, I would think that uh, uh, this uh, I do know that several people would not agree. I do not want to disturb them, and the, this, but I want to tell them that this is Catholic doctrine, and this would uh, uh, go well with what Pope Francis is uh, thinking and teaching and wants us to do. You know, you say that you will say to them that this is Catholic doctrine, that Catholic doctrine has always been understanding, in fact it has always embraced homosexuals, but yes. that's not how these people read or understand Catholic doctrine. Melvin Fernandez, the secretary of the Association of Concerned Catholics, has publicly said that the community does not agree with Cardinal Gracias. And then he adds, I'm quoting him, the Bible has never supported or mentioned anything about homosexuality. In a sense, he's quoting scripture against you. The whole of the scripture, the whole of the gospels is Jesus saying, be merciful, be compassionate, give love to people, help everybody. That's the whole, uh, the whole meaning of the gospel is that. Uh, uh, so, so I can understand, I respect what Mr. Fernandez is saying, but this is really what the Catholic teaching is. You're also saying that Mr. Fernandez is fundamentally wrong, that his understanding of the Catholic faith is wrong. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Now, yes. earlier in this interview, because you this pointed is a out of theology and morals and canon law we've got to be studying. Earlier on in this interview, you pointed out, Cardinal Gracias, that it was for politicians and the legislature to change the law. The Congress Party, in its manifesto in 2014, did commit itself to decriminalizing homosexuality. But the BJP, the ruling party of the day, is shy or scared to do so. How would you encourage Mr. Modi and his government to take that step? What could you say to convince them, don't be shy or scared, this is the right thing to do? No, I, I guess that uh, Mr. Modi has got so many things, important things to deal with, and this perhaps is not high on his priority list. 
but uh, gradually I guess when they reflect and understand and see what people are thinking all over the world many they will um, I am hopeful will also come to see this this is what uh, governments and countries all over the world are saying let me put to you an argument that sometimes is made by the BJP they say that on issues of morality and sexuality the law cannot march ahead of what society and convention will accept in other words until Indian people as a whole are ready to accept homosexuality the law can't decriminalize it how do you tackle that attitude but that, that, that there is a certainly sense in what they say about this you can't create social unrest because because of this on the other hand uh, you can't wait for things to happen uh, we must uh, also begin to get people to think about it to understand it I, I think if you really do reflect understand and read scriptures see uh, what different religions say you will see that this is an open attitude and uh, I, I think that gradually I, I'm convinced that in time this will come finally Carlos Gracias this is an issue that touches on the lives of millions of people tens of millions of people you've had the courage and the integrity to speak out how do you propose to pursue this matter hereafter uh, no my, my own conviction is so clear because I said this is a Catholic teaching Catholic doctrine Catholic morals and uh, it's even there in this uh, implicitly in the final synod document uh, that about the care for the homosexuals and I know that this was discussed over there I was in the drafting commission I know it was discussed over there so uh, I suppose it will take time for people to gradually accept it I do understand it may be something new surprising but after reflection and understanding and study of theology and scripture and morals and canon law they be able to understand it but you will as a cardinal of the church as well as as an individual keep pushing this subject keep pushing the boat forward uh, sorry Karan I didn't get, get I'm you I'm saying that. you will as a cardinal of the church keep pushing this cause you won't give up having spoken yes. once you will continue to make your voice heard Oh uh, no 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 no! This is sort of for me. It's a, it, as I said, it is it is Catholic theology, and this is what Christ would do. This is what the Church wants, and we take into consideration all the different circumstances. I, I think that certain people have not fully understood at all uh, what I've said earlier in the interview, and that's why they've been upset or disagreeing. Well, they've not understood. But this is the Church's thinking. And this is what the church is, the direction the church is going, the direction Pope Francis is leading the church. All right, Cardinal Gracias, I thank you for having come on this program and for having reiterated I, and perhaps spoken to you. It's a joy. Thank you so much. An honor to be with you. I hope the government of the day and I hope yeah, politicians you. beyond the government are hearing you and I hope they show the same compassion, understanding, and warmth that you've had the courage to show. Thank you very much indeed.